Hey guys, welcome back. We're absolutely drowning in a whole bunch of brand new polls that have been released over this past day, and I figured I better get to making a new video before things get too out of hand. 14 brand new polls that I'm going to run through in today's video. Going to start off with what I figure is probably going to be the last new South Carolina poll that we get before their primary, which is tomorrow, and then a ton of Super Tuesday state-specific results, as well as some new national polls, and we'll close out with those national numbers. So starting off here is the South Carolina poll. This one coming from data for progress sample size here of 1416 and a little bit more positive of a sign here for bernie sanders than some of the south carolina polls that we saw from him yesterday where he's at least within respectability to biden and they're the only two candidates that are above that 15 percent threshold where you have biden there at 34 bernie at 25 and then steyer and Buttigieg each at 13 warren at seven klobuchar at five and gabbard at three the next poll is from a Super Tuesday state coming from Christopher Newport University, a sample size of 561, and the former vice president leading this particular Virginia poll at 22%, followed by Bernie Sanders, who's at 17. Michael Bloomberg is there at 13, and those were the only three candidates that were getting in double digits, and only Biden and Sanders were getting past that 15 percentage point threshold. And then behind them, you had Buttigieg and Warren each at 8%, with Klobuchar at 5 and this poll is North Carolina, another Super Tuesday state from Meredith College, a sample size here of 430 and pretty close race at the top between Sanders, Biden and Bloomberg, where you have Bernie leading the way at around 20 percent with Biden in second place around 18, Bloomberg in third at 17, and then also a couple of other candidates that are around those double digit numbers where you see Elizabeth Warren at 11 percent, Pete Buttigieg at 10, and then you have Amy Klobuchar there at four percentage points. And then the Super Tuesday state of Massachusetts is going to be a fascinating one, likely between Sanders and Warren at the top. And that's what this poll is indicating to us. This one is from YouGov and the University of Massachusetts Amherst, a sample size of 400. And with leaners, we see here Bernie Sanders in first place at 25%, very close and competitive with Elizabeth Warren bringing in 23 percentage points. That would be a really poor sign from Elizabeth Warren. She is the senator from Massachusetts, and if she doesn't even win her home state, then she probably doesn't win any state throughout this entire process, or that's what at least conventional wisdom would indicate. And Sanders has something of an advantage here over some of the other competitors with the fact that Massachusetts is a neighboring state to Vermont, and he is a bit more well-known up there in the Northeast, so one would figure he would do decently well in Massachusetts. And then you have Pete Buttigieg there at 14%, followed by former Vice President Biden at 12 Bloomberg is bringing in 9 with Klobuchar at 7, Gabbard at 4, and then Tom Steyer at 3%. And then the Super Tuesday state of California is starting to look more and more like an almost guaranteed lock, it feels like, for Bernie at this point with how many polls we've seen out of this state over the past few weeks where he's been building on and getting a rather significant lead in a number of these instances. So in this one, he leads the way with this UC Berkeley poll, a sample size of 3,002. He's bringing in 34% of support, double the second place respondent in this poll, which was Elizabeth Warren at 17%. And the two progressive candidates doing much better than the rest of the field. Then you have Bloomberg bringing in 12%. Oh, and also comparing this to the prior UC Berkeley poll that we had, which came out about a month ago, Sanders is up eight points. Warren falls back three. Bloomberg there with his 12% of support picks up six points from that prior poll. Buttigieg at 11. He picks up four points. Biden, not a good sign from him. He's bringing in 8%. That's 7% worse than that prior result. Klobuchar is at six. She picks up one point and Steyer stays even at two points. Only two candidates are getting above that 15 percentage point number, but we've seen a lot of these California polls where Sanders is doing very well. And then there's a number of candidates that are kind of hovering around that 15 percentage point number. If it actually ends up being a case statewide where Sanders is the only one that reaches viability, that would be a really positive sign for him getting a ton of pledged delegates out of the state. The next poll coming out of the state of Utah, this is an area that Sanders had quite a bit of success in back in 2016. This polling resource from Harris X, a sample size of 298, and Bernie leading the pack there out west. And Bernie's doing really well in a lot of these western states. We can see he's leading this one 28%, followed by Michael Bloomberg at 19% competitive there with Pete Buttigieg, who's bringing in 18%, Warren at 15 So you actually have four candidates reaching the viability threshold statewide in this instance with Biden 
kind of a head scratcher how poor this one is. Probably somewhat of an outlier, perhaps. I bet if you take a lot of Utah polls, Biden's probably going to be doing a little bit better than just 6% if I had to put my own money on it. But then you also have Klobuchar there a little bit behind Biden at 4%. And we get another Massachusetts poll, this one coming from Mass Inc. And we can compare it to the prior result that came out of this resource, which was all the way back in October. And October was a really positive time for Elizabeth Warren. And we can see that in the changes here in this polling result. So 426 respondents here in Massachusetts. Bernie leading the way at 25% of support. He gains 12 points from that prior poll, whereas Elizabeth Warren brings in second place at 17%. She loses 15 points. She was at 32 points in the prior numbers. Buttigieg gains seven points up to 14. This is the first result that Bloomberg is in with this particular poll. He brings in 13%. Biden takes a big step back himself, loses nine percentage points. He was at 18. Now he's down to nine. Klobuchar picks up five points to 6%, and Steyer picks up one point. He is at two percentage points in this Massachusetts poll. And then we got a Texas poll here from the University of Houston, a sample size of 1,004. And it's a relatively competitive race there at the top among the top three individuals. Bernie leading the way at 26% of support. And then in second place, you have a tie between Biden and Bloomberg, who are each at 20 percentage points, respectively. And there's a number of these Super Tuesday states where Bloomberg being somewhat of a factor is likely taking away some of that older centrist moderate type vote in the Democratic primary. And that's opening up the door for Sanders to potentially pick up a number of more wins on Super Tuesday than he might have had otherwise if Bloomberg wasn't in this race. Perhaps Texas is an instance of that happening. And then also for Sanders, of course, doing well among the Latino voters, which also could carry him to a potential victory there in the key state of Texas. Another result that has a ton of pledged delegates up for grabs. And then behind those top three individuals, you have Warren at 11 percent, Buttigieg bringing in six, and then Klobuchar and Steyer are each at two percentage points respectively. And now the next two polls are both out of key Super Tuesday states of California and Texas again. And these come from CNN, and we can compare them to the prior result from CNN out of these states and some really interesting changes in the numbers. So this CNN California poll, a sample size of 488, and we can see in comparison to the prior result, which was in the earlier portion of December, Bernie just blitzes ahead here. He's at 35%. He gains 15 points. Warren in second place, and all of these candidates below that 15 percentage point threshold number, you have Warren at 14, she loses three points. Biden at 13, he loses eight points. Bloomberg at 12, he picks up seven. Buttigieg at nine, he drops, or excuse me, at seven, he drops two percentage points. He was at nine. Klobuchar picks up four points to 6% overall. And then Steyer is there at three. He picks up two points from that prior CNN California poll. And then the sample size here of this Texas poll is 488 respondents and another situation where Bernie takes a significant step forward, gaining 14 points from the prior poll. He's in first place at 29%. Biden loses 15 points down to 20. Bloomberg there at 18%. Warren picks up a couple of points to 15. Buttigieg takes a one point step back to eight. Klobuchar picks up two percentage points. She's there at three. Next, we have a poll out of North Carolina, this one coming from Spry Strategies, a sample size of 587. In comparing to the prior poll that came out from this resource, which was just a handful of days ago, it actually came before this last debate that we just had, so kind of a shifting in the numbers after the South Carolina debate, at least in this particular North Carolina poll, where Biden gains seven percentage points, where he's up to around 27% in first place. Sanders loses about a point. He's at 19 in second place. Bloomberg loses four points down to 16. Warren picks up a couple of points to around 11. Klobuchar loses a point. She's around five. And then Pete Buttigieg picks up about a point around 4%. And to close things out, we have three national polls. Going to start with this Survey USA result in comparison to the poll that they had around 10 days ago, a sample size of 825. Bernie leads the pack here at 28%. He loses one percentage point where Biden and Bloomberg both pick up three points in this instance. They're each there tied for second at 21 percentage points. Buttigieg loses three points down to nine. Warren loses a couple of points down to eight. Klobuchar stays even at four. And then you have Steyer staying even at 2%. 
And then we have a brand new YouGov poll in comparison to the numbers that they had a couple of weeks ago. Bernie gained seven percentage points. He's in first place at 27% of support. Biden loses one point to 21. Warren picks up three points to 18. Bloomberg picks up five points. He's there at 14. Buttigieg loses a point to 10. Klobuchar gains a point to four. And then Tom Steyer gains a point to 2%. And to close things out, we have a morning consult national poll here with data taken after this past South Carolina debate, and it was most beneficial to Bernie Sanders as well as Joe Biden. A sample size here of 5,334. Bernie in comparison to the numbers that we had just before the South Carolina debate, he picks up a point in first place at 33%. Biden gains three points up to 21, whereas Bloomberg loses a couple of points to 17. Warren is there staying flat at 11, where Buttigieg loses a point to 10, followed by Klobuchar at four, Tom Steyer at three, and Tulsi Gabbard at two. And what I think we could possibly get here going forward, especially if Joe Biden has a decent result this weekend in the South Carolina primary, where those centrist moderate type voters who were fading away from Joe Biden after his very poor performances in Iowa and New Hampshire started to gain maybe a little bit more confidence after his second place finish in Nevada. And then if he finishes first in South Carolina, perhaps some of that vote that trickled away and went over to candidates like a Bloomberg or a Buttigieg or a Klobuchar, maybe that coalesces again behind the former vice president. And perhaps he can close this gap a bit like we saw from him over the past handful of days where he picks up three points, but still 12 percentage points back of Bernie Sanders in these morning consult numbers in a stark contrast and difference compared to these national morning consult numbers that we had just a month or so ago and really over this past entire year where Joe Biden was the one who had consistently a double digit lead over Sanders. And that's been totally turned around and flipped on its head after Sanders was able to win the popular vote across the first three contests. So some really interesting stuff going on. We have the upcoming South Carolina primary this weekend. And then just a few days after that, we have Super Tuesday, where there's 14 states and then two other contests, which would be American Samoa, as well as Democrats abroad. As those results come in, I'm going to be updating you guys as much as I reasonably can, as well as making my predictions for all of those races and tracking everything with the Pledge Delegate Tracker so we can see exactly where this race is. So if that's content that interests you guys, and if you haven't already done so, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel, and I hope to see you back here for my next video.